I'm Charles Pappert. I'm a cinematographer working in the feature film and television industry. Today I'm shooting a scene for a horror film on the JVC HD100, and I've invited some fellow filmmakers to the set who are interested in seeing how the camera works. My name's Eric. I'm a cinematographer. Hi, I'm Paul Taylor, and uh, my, my background was in film. My name is Nate, and I'm an independent filmmaker. My name is Gina, and I'm a cinematographer. I'm uh, Kumar. I'm actually a filmmaker. The scene we are shooting today required a dark, moody feel. In the opening shot of the actress walking downstairs, this meant having her pass through pools of light. Sometimes she's just a silhouette against a brighter splash in the background. Because the one third inch chip creates a rather extensive depth of field, especially at wide focal lengths, it's really helpful to use lighting contrast like this to create different planes and to focus the viewer's attention. Charles, why did you choose the JVC camera? Well, what's great with the JVC camera is that it's interchangeable lenses. And right now we're using uh, a really wonderful uh, new lens that Fujian brought out, a 13 by wide angle zoom. Great uh -huh. optical quality. Uh, and of course, it being interchangeable, I can swap it out to any other lens that I want. So I picked exactly the lens that, I, that I'd like to be using for the shoot, which of course with many uh, cameras is not an option. Right. So what type of lens mount does it use? What's great is that Fujian is making a range of adapters for this mount, so you can go from the one third inch to a half inch or to a two third inch uh, lens mount, which will let you use an entire legacy of existing uh, video lenses. That's great because there, yeah, there's no other camera that does it now. It's like my concern about this platform is being able to do that because with film background, you want to be able to have that flexibility. Right, exactly. If you're, if you're used to working in film, you've got zooms available to you, right. primes available to you. When you buy a camera that uh, has a fixed lens to it, right. the only thing you can do is put an attachment in front of it, so you're going through mm -hmm. all those extra optics. The advantage, of course, with an interchangeable uh, lens camera, which mm -hmm. is, you know, there's not many in this class, is that you can actually work with that wide range of lenses that's exactly right for your job at hand. The JVC having this interchangeable lens is, I think, huge. The Mini 35 is a great tool because it gives you the shallow depth of field for 35 millimeter, and when you couple it with an HDV camera such as the HD100, you got a dynamite package. You've got all this resolution, you got the shallow fall off that you're used to seeing in film, and it really looks incredible. It looks like 35 millimeter. With that adapter, I can pretty much go with any lenses, like you know, like basic 35 millimeter lenses. So those are things that I'm really excited uh, to try. One of the things that I'm concerned about with when I'm shooting video is always uh, focus. Can I be sure I'm in focus? Um, with DV cameras, you can virtually not focus a lot of the time, and you can get away with it a lot. Uh, when HD, you add all that resolution in there, you definitely need to uh, be more attentive to it. So again, it's great that this camera allows you to use manual lenses, so you've got you know, your nice focus knob, or you can do it right from the lens, but you know that when you stop on a mark, you're at that mark. It's very secure. You can look down and see you are, where you are at all times. The other feature that the, uh, the camera offers is the focus assist. The focus assist feature will overlay a color pattern oh, wow. right onto the image, which lets you see if that object is in oh, focus by highlighting the edge. So that lets you see where you are at all times. One of the most requested features from both my rental customers as well as my project uh, clients is that we have 24 full frames a second uh, to match the film look. It's important to understand how to use 24p to your advantage. Some people describe the look as jittery or stroby, but often this has more to do with the shot design than the technology within the camera. There's a particular range of pan speeds that will create an undesirable judder. Experimentation will help you learn this range of speeds and how to avoid them. I call it the no-fly zone. Here we are doing a series of whip pans that are actually faster than the top end of the no-fly zone. Well, I think one of the crucial things about HDV is it does offer 24p, which gives you the film look, I think, even more important than uh, gamma and matrix is that, is that pull-down, that 3-2 pull-down, because I, I personally believe that's what subconsciously allows the viewer to suspend disbelief and think it's only a movie. Uh, how do you feel about the skin tones? Well, you know, uh, I think the skin tones just keep getting better and better in, in video cameras. It used to be kind of a big mm -hmm. problem, but I feel like you get very cinematic skin tones, um, you know, what we're shooting today. Uh, there's also a skin um, detail level control in the camera, so you can actually selectively grab onto a piece of the skin tone, dial it in, and then bring down the detail just in the skin tones alone, mm -hmm. which gives you a little extra help when you need it. It's almost like applying makeup from uh -huh. within the camera. It takes you know, the imperfections and the blotchiness away just a little bit, kind of uh -huh. defocuses the skin, which is pretty neat. Well, digital 
cinematography is always more challenging than film just due to the more limited contrast range. So I want to find out regarding this camera, how many stops can I go over key and under key and still maintain a quality image. The viewfinder has a zebra level also, which will let you know if your highlights are an issue. I tend to like to underexpose video a little bit. I think it makes it look a little bit more filmic. Um, you know, when your faces aren't what engineers would consider to be where faces should be, I find that a little too bright looking. But it's a fine line because if you overexpose video, then it's gone. You don't have it anymore. If you underexpose, you can always bring it up just a little bit. Here we are shooting footage of the television from a source tape that was built previously. Because we are shooting in tungsten mode on the HD100, the footage was color corrected to accommodate the daylight color temperature of the TV so that it doesn't photograph with a blue tone. I'm interested in the ergonomics of the camera. I want to know how it sits on my shoulder. I want to know where the buttons are and how intuitive it is. One of the downfalls to the old DV cameras is kind of the layout of it. They're not really laid out like professional cameras. Well, what I think is really great about the HD100 is it's a very small form factor. It's very lightweight, but yet, unlike all the other cameras I've seen in its class, it's not out there in your, in your hands and it's not jammed up against your shoulder. It actually rests on your shoulder like a professional camera. And actually, let's, let's take a look over here at our friend Tom. He's got one right in his shoulder over here, as you can see. This is actually sitting on his shoulder. It's comfortable. Tom, would you say it's, it's a comfortable camera to operate? Yeah, it's really comfortable. There you go. Comfortable it is. <laughs> um, you know, he's used to working with a much larger camera, but this is a very natural transition. Everything's where you want it to be. Also, the controls are laid out similarly to professional cameras. So what you end up here with is something that's very comfortable. You can wear it all day long. It barely weighs anything, but yet it's braced against your body, so you can get much more stable images. So for this project, uh, to shoot this short scene, I really wanted a camera that could deliver a cinematic image. I wanted a true 24 frame uh, progressive image, and I wanted to use interchangeable lenses so I could pick exactly the lens I wanted for the job, and the HD100 delivered all of that. Finally, there's a format th that allows me to produce my own projects. It's affordable and competes with film. By having a higher resolution, I'm definitely getting more detail in the picture. So I really like HD because it gives me that quality. Uh, a lot of the features that I like in film. You don't have to go out with a full film crew, possibly, to shoot second unit. You can use this, and for action sequences and stuff, it's just incredible. I have been converted. <laughs>